Hello and welcome into End on a Make, where tonight I just wanted to talk a little bit about basketball in Los Angeles. Now, the NBA playoffs have been, for the most part, really, really exciting games. They've been good matchups um, outside of Milwaukee, Miami, and Boston, Brooklyn, like we kind of expected. Everything else has been really exciting, and it's been packed with close games and some upsets. You got, you know, Memphis beating... Utah in game one, you had uh, Portland shocking Denver, only to then get blown out in game two to even that series. But the two series that I want to talk most about tonight are the Clippers and the Mavericks and the Lakers and the Suns, because that is two Los Angeles teams that seem to be on wildly different trajectories. So in game one, the Mavericks came out and shocked the Clippers beat them handily, Luka Doncic with a huge triple-double, um, and he looked like the best player on the court in a series with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George on the other team. He has just absolutely dominated. He has just, I can't even think of the phrase that I'm trying to think, he has just executed his will. He has done everything he has wanted on the court. The Clippers haven't really had an answer for it. So for the series so far, he's averaging 35, 9 assists, and 8.5 and rebounds. And he's just basically getting everywhere he wants on the court. They've thrown Patrick Beverly at him. And in the first game, Luka said, you know, he's too small and was just trash-talking him basically up and down the court. Uh, it was more of the same tonight where they were hunting Patrick Beverly. That was who they wanted to switch on to Luka. And that, you know... Patrick Beverly has that reputation as being like the dog defensively, that that super tough defender, and the Mavericks are just openly hunting him. And for the series, he's only averaging six points across the two games, not shooting very well, unless it's a wide open catch and shoot three. And so if you're not getting that defense defensive effort from him, it's not good. <laughs> it's not looking good. And they have such an overlap when it comes to their most talented players being those those wing players that, you know, without a proper guard to kind of keep everything going. And, you know, playoff Rondo, he's a real thing, but you can't be really relying on him to turn back the clock that much to where he's playing those heavy minutes. And as a result, what it's led to, especially tonight for game two, was Kawhi guarding Luka. And Kawhi had 41 tonight. He was absolutely cooking on offense. But on defense, he had to follow Luka around as much as possible to try to limit his shots. And that's not what you want in the first round for Kawhi Leonard, who is one of the players at the heart of the load management discussion, debate, whatever you want to call it. He is a player that likes to save it. He'll go hard defensively in big moments when he absolutely has to now. And that's just a result of the injuries he's had. I think that quad injury really messed him up, and he's been trying to play it smarter and more conservative as far as defense goes outside of those big high-pressure moments. So using him to the tune of 41 minutes uh, per game in both of these first games is just tough. It's a tough ask for him, especially if they somehow come back and this ends up being a series that, you know, goes – six seven games like that's a lot of aggressive hard minutes to put on your star who is used to resting a little bit more and that could be a recipe for disaster and for paul george i feel bad for him because it doesn't even take 10 minutes in the first quarter for playoff p or pandemic p or any of those those you know to be trending but you know he's scoring okay he's got 25 points per game for the first two games but he's shooting 20% from three, and he is taking a lot of threes. Not good. Uh, it's tough. And he's getting good looks. He's getting open looks. He has had a couple that are, you know, hand in his face, tough defense, late shot clock threes. But for the most part, he's getting shots that he seems to want. And that's tough. That's a tough look. The Clippers have him under contract. He just signed that big extension. Kawhi is not. I believe he can opt out after this season. And that's a huge, huge potential issue for this team because the Clippers have mortgaged their future. They sent all of those draft picks and Shea Gilgis-Alexander to Oklahoma City to get Paul George to team him with Kawhi Leonard 
to make this run, this exact time frame, this run. And if Paul, if you know they keep Paul George under contract, but Kawhi opts out and leaves, or you know he just leaves and they get nothing back in return for him, that's a disaster for the Clippers. That their their seasons with him would be a second round exit, and then you know depending on how this goes, it could be a first round exit. But the other problem is there's no quick fix for this team. So every player in their starting lineup right now is a negative plus minus. Zubak, uh, Avika Zubak is the worst with like a negative, a minus 17 and a half when he's on the court. Um, but Dallas is just hitting an incredible amount of threes. There's no shooter on Dallas right now that is under 40% as far as like high volume three point shooters everyone is hitting porzingis is hitting uh tim hardaway jr is shooting great jordan finney smith maxi kleba all of those dudes who can be so inconsistent are hitting those threes and the clippers defense is what they usually have to try to rely on to force turnovers get those fast break points get the up-tempo offense going and Dallas is just picking them apart and Luka is making them play at the speed that he wants to play at and that's an incredible thing for a third year player making his second playoff run to be able to do to a team with you know the caliber of players that the Clippers have I've seen a lot of people calling out Ty Lu, and it's really funny because it calls to mind what Doc Rivers said when he was asked about it earlier this year and he said, you know, Ty Lue was right there on the bench with me. He was right next to me. Um, and you just see these weird decisions. So, like, Serge Ibaka has a huge a uh, huge positive in plus minus compared to the other centers for the Clippers. But he's only played, like, 17 minutes. I think we'll probably see more of him. Uh, Terrence Mann got some minutes tonight. And I think we'll probably see him a little bit more than Pat Bev even. I'm sure we'll still get the Rondo minutes. But it looks like they'll probably run with Terrence Mann a little bit more than Patrick Beverly, especially with how Luke has been just bodying up to him. Um, and the other player that's been a disaster for the Clips is Luke Kennard, who is making $18 million a year to be a DNP CD for the first two games of the playoffs. He's like the third or fourth highest paid player on the roster, and he's not playing the playoff games. So I don't know if that's something that they're going to switch up and try or if it's just going to be, you know, they just accept it and take their take their chances with him not playing. But that is a disaster that you would be paying him that much money to not play these high pressure playoff games like you need the shooting. I know he probably doesn't provide as much defense as you need right now to go against the Mavericks. But like you need shooting to stay in these games right now. Um, and for Dallas, the last thing I want to touch on with them is how so last year it was a huge issue for them against the Clippers where Porzingis got hurt and Luka tried to do everything himself, but it was just a chippy series. It was a first playoff appearance for him. He got the one game on the buzzer beater in the bubble and, you know, had that moment, but it was a case of him not having the help. And this year so far, he hasn't needed Porzingis to be that help. He's had uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., who has been incredible scoring the ball to start the series, these first two games. He is 63% from three right now, 64% overall from the field, and he has just carried the load as far as being that next man up to run along with Luka. I think 24.5 points per game, and it's really boosted everybody's, everybody's floor, especially Porzingis, because if Porzingis doesn't have to be a two, as far as like a second option and can be like the best third option, you're you're gonna have a higher higher ceiling as a team because he's not gonna take those you know he well he'll still take those crazy threes that he just kind of tries to step into but you're not living and dying by them as much because you can count on Luca to get you know get the defense collapsed into the paint he can kick it out to those open corners with Kleba or Dorian Finney Smith or Tim Hardaway, who will apparently right now hit 64% of those threes that he gets, and you're going to have a much more efficient offense. So there was a couple plays tonight where things broke down. They sent the double team at Luka, and Luka was able to, you know, hit it to a secondary playmaker. I think it was Tim Hardaway Jr. in this case, 
and Tim Hardaway saw an, a wide open Porzingis basically walk to the rim, and he hit him for a late two that kind of helped seal the deal and quell a little bit of a Clippers comeback attempt. And so that that Mavericks offense is playing fast, great basketball. They are getting open looks that they are hitting. I don't know. You know, it's early to say that they'll absolutely end up winning the series. It is shifting back to Dallas, which is a good sign. I think they said it's going to be something like 15,000 Mavericks fans will be, or well, fans, because I'm sure Clippers fans will make a trip. But you're going to have a lot of momentum for that team. And with how well they've been playing, that type of momentum could help push them over the top. And it wouldn't be a surprise. And it's just kind of, you know, it's that basketball irony where the Clippers tanked the last couple games to get the lower seed, get what they thought was the easier matchup. And now here they are in in 0-2 hole, losing two home playoff games and heading to Dallas, you know, essentially about to fight for their lives for this postseason run. And the other game I want to talk about that I will talk about really quickly so this isn't a super long rambling video is the Lakers Suns. Uh, the Suns took the first game by just essentially dominating the Lakers. And the Lakers, you know, they responded tonight. It was a strong, strong bounce back showing for Dennis Schroeder and Anthony Davis in particular. I think AD took something like 21 free throws. And that's what he needs to do. And that's a thing that drove me crazy about the first game was all the minutes where you had AD and Andre Drummond overlapping each other because Drummond's best near the rim. And that clogs everything for Anthony Davis. And that leaves Anthony Davis to settle for those mid-range or those three-point shots. And, you know, he's got good touch and he is a good scorer, of course. But where he's at his best is getting those cuts to the basket and getting into the post and working his way to the rim and getting those foul calls and just using his size and his skill to just essentially do whatever he wants inside. So you saw finally uh, Mark Gasol minutes tonight. He didn't play a lot. I believe it was about 16 minutes. Uh, he hit two threes. But more than that, it was just the spacing that he provided for them. So he had um, a couple assists. He had a few more that were fumbled by the people he was passing to or they missed the shot that he got them. But he just overall knows how to make those smart plays. And that's not to say that Andre Drummond didn't prove me wrong tonight and have a very good game. He had a double double before the first half was over, and he just he looked like a much more aggressive player. Uh, Schroeder as well, I think, ended up with 24 points tonight. He had that offense humming a lot better, um, and took a lot of the load off of LeBron, who surprisingly wasn't aggressive really tonight. Still, he got to his 20 points. He hit unbelievable circus shots in crunch time, like he is uh, often one to do, but. He wasn't putting his head down, and he wasn't just driving to the rim. And I don't know if that's lingering effects from injury or if it's, you know, like he said earlier, he'll never be 100% again. I don't know if this is just, you know, him trying to pace himself or if he really isn't 100%. But as long as everything else, as long as you get that type of aggression from Anthony Davis, it should be okay for now. Uh, the other issue the Lakers had really is their shooting KCP. Kuzma and Wesley Matthews are shooting like absolute trash right now. Kuzma is still providing a lot of effort and energy on the defensive end, which you love to see because he was a player earlier in his career who would absolutely like check out on possessions. If he wasn't hitting his shots, he, you could see that it would, you know, it would bother him. And so to see that effort that he continues to give on the defensive end is a really cool development that I did not expect from him even like two seasons ago. Uh, KCP, Wesley Matthews, KCP looked scared when he got the ball. He was looking at the rim, and it looked like he was just like, yeah, no, I'll swing it. I'll shoot it if I absolutely have to, but otherwise, keep it moving. I'm going to swing it over. Um, so we'll see if they continue to struggle like that or if they can finally start to get a f little bit, you know, a little bit more scoring to kind of just help alleviate the pressure on Schroeder and Davis in particular, but to make sure that LeBron doesn't have to do too much this early in the playoff run <clears throat> and on the phoenix end of it you know you just hate to see chris paul be limited by that shoulder injury that popped up at the uh at the second half of the first game he played only seven minutes in the second half tonight he looked absolutely limited 
in the first half as well, and it sucks. It sucks because they were clearly a team that was on par with the Lakers in that first game. They were better than the Lakers that first game. They came out, and they absolutely dominated. And DeAndre Ayton looked like the type of player that you would take number one overall. I'm not going to go so far as to say like you could justifiably take number one overall above Luka Doncic because I think it's two different types of player. But you can see what, what Phoenix was thinking watching how he has debuted in these playoffs. And Devin Booker continues to be just absolutely lethal from everywhere on the court. But with Chris Paul limited, you saw that Lakers defense lock in on him a little bit more. And, you know, they were the number one defense this season for a reason. So they were able to lock in on him and just make it harder for him to score, to get to his spots, to do anything he wanted. And the Suns should be encouraged a little bit because in relief for CP3, we had Cameron Payne uh, play very well. I think he finished like 16 points, 18 points, somewhere in there, seven assists. And he, you know, he gave them an edge that they needed desperately to continue their comeback and to fight in this game late where, you know, he is a chippy player. He is not afraid of the moment. He is stepping right up to anyone that is crowding him or getting in his space. He's that irritant type of player that every team really needs. But because you can count on him to score and not just be, you know, that chippy player, it gives them at least something to keep the offense humming when Booker's not in or when he's getting doubled. But without Chris Paul, it's going to just not be the same. And that's really disappointing. I really was hoping that we would get a great matchup because Phoenix has been out of the playoffs for so long. The fans were rocking that first game. You could see how much it meant to them. You were excited to see the young stars in the playoff spotlight. LeBron versus Chris Paul is always a great storyline. So it's disappointing absolutely to see. I hope that the days of rest and travel will help CP3 because it's not the same when, you know, when a team wins with an injury like that hanging over the series. Um, so... I mean, we'll see what happens. Uh, let me know your thoughts on these or any other playoff games or matchups that you've really enjoyed so far in the comments. I would love to hear it. Um, and, you know, we will be back soon. Not too sure the schedule I want to go with these playoff games every night. I will probably just talk about the ones that jump out to me or if something crazy happens. Uh, but, yeah, let me know your thoughts on the playoffs so far. And I will be back soon. Thank you.